We're now joined by House Foreign Affairs Committee Ranking Member Congressman Michael McCall. Thank you for joining me, sir. And in your wildest dreams, do you think that the Chinese are serious in their threat about shooting down the speaker's plane? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think this is a big threat, and they're good at doing that. I, I think they want to be very provocative. Uh, they don't want the Speaker of the House to go to Taiwan like uh, Speaker Gingrich went to in 1997. Uh, but they will be provocative. And, you know, when this goes forward, and I was actually invited on the trip, I uh, couldn't make it, but I, I anticipate they'll have, they'll have their own fighter jets playing, you know, uh, as President Xi told Biden, if you play, uh, if you play with fire, you're going to get burnt, right? So I, I anticipate they're going to fly planes and be provocative, but they would, even Xi knows better than to shoot down a United States airplane with the Speaker of the House. You know, I guess, I mean, cooler heads say what you say, but I mean, is there not somewhat of a risk that someone would get a particularly stubborn or provoked or think has permission or make a mistake? I mean, when you're playing with fighter planes up in the air like this, I mean, it's, and making those threats, um, is there not somewhat of a risk? Of course. And, and I think that's why the military has warned against this. Um, and, you know, you never know when things could escalate. And tensions could escalate in the air, and, and a mistake is made, and something like that happens. The next thing you know, you're, you're going to war. Um, I do think it's important, though, Greta, that members of Congress go to Taiwan to show our commitment and our support, whether it's the Speaker of the House or a member of, of Congress. And, you know, President Biden is sort of playing into Xi's hands uh, by saying, uh, hey, no, you, you can't do that. And once again, exhibiting weakness, uh, you know, expressing weakness. Uh, which invites aggression. And that's why we saw Putin go into Ukraine. And that's why we're seeing Xi, you know, threaten Taiwan. And that, I think that's uh, really the bottom line here. But I, I do think it's risky. Um, uh, it's very bold on the speaker's part to do this. Uh, I do think something provocative will come from the Chinese military uh, if this uh, trip, in fact, goes forward, which I believe it will, Greta. Yeah, and of course that we've we've gotten her uh, itinerary, but that is not on the itinerary. And she said, I think, in a press conference that she's not going to give out travel details. Uh, but look, is there not a way for Congress to show its support by supplying weapons if Congress wants to, without sort of poking a stick in the eye, knowing that the Chinese are going to do this? All right. You know, it's funny. I bumped into General Petraeus. I did an earlier uh, interview on this, and I asked him, you know. What do you think about this? And he said, you know, sometimes you just don't want to stick them in the eye. And, and um, you know, I worry uh, that may be uh, what is happening. Uh, and this is turning into a showdown, interestingly, between President Biden and, and his own Speaker of the House. Uh, and, you know, what does he do with President Xi? Uh, it's, it's, it's really, the whole thing is escalating. Uh, in an area that we don't think, we want things to de-escalate, not escalate. But I would argue that President Xi is the provocative one here. He's the one escalating, talking about if you play with fire, you know, we're going we're gonna to burn you, essentially. Uh, he's the one that's sending his military to surround the island of Taiwan. And, you know, one other fact, Greta, 90% of the advanced semiconductor chip manufacturing comes out of Taiwan. I do think within the, the, the span of the Biden presidency, he's going to find a way, whether it's without a shot fired like Hong Kong or with, with a shot fired with a military invasion, to take it over while Biden's still in office. And imagine that if, if China, communist China, had possession of 90 percent of the global uh, world's manufacturing of, global, of these advanced semiconductor chips, which were in everything from your phone, cars, to most advanced weapon systems. You know, usually, I mean, we, we fight, we have down and dirty uh, brawls politically in this country, but when it comes to matters of foreign affairs, it tends to be that we all get on the same page. And I do find it surprising that Speaker Pelosi, um, she first planned this in April, and she got COVID, so she couldn't make it. And now we see this sort of intra-party uh, spat with the President of the United States on something so important that I'm actually surprised how this was handled. I, I am too. I mean, you know, again, I, I was as you know, a leader on Foreign Affairs Committee, invited to go on this trip. I had a, a family obligation, but it's interesting to see how this has escalated within the Democratic Party, 
between the President of the United States, again, President Biden, and Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, and, uh, you know, she, she uh, really believes in Taiwan and in some ways is very much a hawk on China. And I wonder if Biden thinks that's going to upset somehow his foreign policy with China, which has been more appeasement, if you will. Um, and I do think the military, in fairness, are worried about uh, this escalating tensions between, you know, communist China and Taiwan. Uh, we don't want this trip to result um, in a provocation that could lead to war. Uh, and that, that's the greatest risk uh, with this trip. Um, and maybe one of the reasons why I decided not to go uh, on it, um, although I think it's important we do show our, our commitment uh, and showing a support for Taiwan. Uh, it's a very strategic island, and we know that President Xi has designs not only on Taiwan, but the entire South Pacific. Uh, he's already taken the Solomon Islands without a shot fired, signing a security agreement, and basically bought off the Solomon Islands that my father's generation in World War II liberated. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot at stake here, right? I mean, they're rewriting the match after World War II, both in Europe and the South Pacific. Thank you, Congressman Mike McCall. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Greta. Always good to be on your show.